Hello, dear friends. My name is Dr. Igor Atabekov. I am clinical oncologist practicing since 2010 in Russia. Uh, today we are talking about a popular remedy, um, resveratrol. It's a potent antioxidant that uh, gotten significant interest uh, for its diverse health benefits. It's found in grapes, peanuts, red wine, berries, and it has been extensively studied in human cl clinical trials for its effects on cardiovascular system, metabolic disorders, neurological function, and uh, age-related conditions. Also, it was studied uh, in uh, cancer patients. And we have plenty of preclinical data on uh, cells, on animals. We know quite a lot about uh, its mechanisms of action. You can see a schema there. Uh, these compounds, uh, multifaceted biological activities, uh, stem from its ability to modulate uh, oxidative stress, inflammation, cellu cellular metabolism. Uh, but because we have also a lot of clinical data on humans, uh, we will focus on that. First, blood pressure. Uh, multiple randomized controlled trials demonstrated uh, resveratrol favorable effects on blood pressure. For example, um, one study in uh, type 2 diabetes patients, it was a six months uh, randomized clinical trial, 57 participants. Uh, it showed that uh, 250 milligrams of resveratrol per day significantly reduce uh, upper uh, or systolic blood pressure from mean, mean was 140, 140, and it became 131. So it's quite a good effect uh, compared to controls, of course. Uh, and another trial uh, with 66 patients uh, receiving one gram per day uh, for 45 days, it reduced uh, the pressure by eight also. Uh, other study, healthy obese individuals, uh, randomized control, 11 obese men uh, receiving uh, 150 milligrams of resveratrol for 30 days. It uh, reported a decrease in uh, uh, blood pressure by uh, 6. So it's already not bad because this substance uh, is considered to be not toxic. This is the list of different clinical trials. Uh, we know that resveratrol also improves endothelial function. function. Uh, for example, 12-week um, crossover randomized control trial uh, with 28 obese adults demonstrated that 75 milligrams per day of resveratrol, transresveratrol, improved uh, endothelial function and blood flow. This compound appears to reduce vascular inflammation. That can be a good prophylactic uh, remedy for atherosclerosis. What about diabetes? Um, we know that multiple studies report that resveratrol reduces insulin resistance and serum glucose levels, and uh, it improves uh, lipid profiles in diabetic patients. By activating CIRT1, resveratrol also enhances mitochondrial biogenesis, and these are power plants of our cells, and reduces oxidative stress, key factors of uh, cellular aging. Clinical observations uh, show that uh, it may mimic some calorie restriction, a non-longevity enhancing intervention, intervention, and combined with physical activities, it may improve mitochondrial function and energy metabolism, although human studies uh, show sometimes mixed results. Also, this compound um, appears to mitigate neuroinflammation, a key factor of, or a factor of Alzheimer's disease uh, development. We talked about it in previous videos about different natural remedies for Alzheimer's uh, and multiple sclerosis also through its um, anti-inflammatory abilities and ability to cross blood-brain barrier. Uh, for example, a 52-week trial in Alzheimer's patients showed the stabilization of uh, neurological biomarkers compared to placebo, where they continued to decline. The anti-inflammatory properties of resveratrol have potential in osteoarthritis management, and um, it can maintain bone density by modulating osteoblasts and osteoclasts, 
these are cells producing no new bone and uh, destroying the bone. Uh, but uh, human data is still lacking. We have only preclinical information here. What about toxicity? Human studies show excellent safety. Doses up to one gram per day uh, showed uh, that it's uh, well tolerated. Uh, there were studies showing that uh, if you take three grams per day within six months, uh, you are fine also. Uh, it can cause mild gastrointestinal upset. And uh, the side effect that is most commonly reported. Contraindications um, include bleeding disorders due to its antiplatelet effects. So if uh, the person has bleeding disorders or if he's having some bleeding or have, has low platelets, for example, Discontinue resveratrol uh, at least two weeks before surgery. It can uh, increase potentially the risk of bleeding if combined with other anti-clotting medications like warfarin or aspirin or clopidogrel. And uh, studies show that the uh, intake of resveratrol um, is, um, has anti-platelet activity, anti-clotting uh, activity, uh, comparable to low-dose aspirin. Resveratrol has some bioavailability problems. Uh, we know that only 1% can be absorbed and go through liver, although dietary resveratrol from food is usually better absorbed. That's why ongoing research is um, exploring novel, novel formulations to uh, improve this uh, bioavailability. And we, if we are talking about effects of resveratrol, um, again, as a conclusion, we can say that it can uh, decrease uh, blood pressure, it can help with control of blood sugar in uh, diabetic patients, it can um, have potential neuroprotective effect in dementia, uh, in neurodegenerative diseases, it uh, may improve uh, some vascular health, uh, and uh, it has uh, excellent safety profile if not taken in high doses. Next. You were waiting for, um, maybe you were waiting for uh, oncological application of resveratrol. Resveratrol exhibits weak phytoestrogenic activity, meaning it can interact with hormonal receptors. Resveratrol binds to estrogen receptors and uh, can um, uh, be mixed agonist-antagonist, meaning it can activate some receptors and block the others. From one side, um, phytoestrogens may help for example, to, with menopausal symptoms or uh, help a little bit with osteoporosis because of this activity. From the other side, we are always worried about hormonally sensitive tumors like breast cancer or uterine cancer. I have uh, separate videos on phytoestrogens in uh, breast cancer, in uterine cancer and in menopause. But some preclinical data in resveratrol shows that very low doses may actually promote uh, growth of some uh, hormonal cancers and high doses may block it and also it depends on the type of uh, cancer and because of such um, interesting features of resveratrol and because it's very popular in cancer patients nowadays i will cover it in separate video on resveratrol against cancer if so if you're not subscribed please subscribe not to miss it. I want to thank you for your time, for watching, and uh, I want to thank those who support this channel. It's very important for me. And see you in the next videos. Goodbye, good luck, God bless you. Don't be